Everybody. My name is Jay Lyman. I'm a librarian with Seattle Public Library, and I'm going to be talking about market research in this uh, workshop that we're calling DIY Market Research. Um, so um, in my role at the library, um, I'm a librarian, um, and I um, help people uh, with their, um, I help entrepreneurs with their business and, um, and help them find business information. I run programs and all kinds of, of different ways that we support entrepreneurs in our communities. Um, I'm going to, we're going to go through a lot of the slides, but, you know, some, one of the questions that people ask me, uh, but, you know, you know, is, is why does the library do this work, you know, and so I, before we kind of dive into market research, um, I want to kind of uh, just address that, that question of why, why libraries are, are even doing this. And, and the, the answer is that, you know, libraries reflect, the libraries work best when they reflect their communities. And, um, and so if we have entrepreneurs who are doing that kind of work in our communities, um, of course, we should be there supporting them and, uh, and, and helping them to do that work uh, because it, um, it benefits all of us. Um, so uh, that's why uh, my library at Seattle Public Library um, has a program called Library to Business, um, which you'll see some of the elements of that here. And um, that helps us focus on entrepreneurship. Um, if you're not in Seattle, which many of you probably aren't, not to worry, we're going to be talking about that too, um, because your local library probably has some um, services, programs, tools that you can use too. And so um, don't feel uh, neglected or left out um, if that's the case, because uh, we, you know, I'm here to, here to talk about libraries, not Seattle Public Library uh, in this presentation. Uh, so I'm going to bring up my slide deck here, and uh, we're going to start talking. And we're going to dive into some of these um, these features of market research um, that I uh, help people with uh, a lot. This this is the program we call DIY market research. Do it yourself. Um, when I'm talking with folks about about how you know how your library can support you, how does your library help entrepreneurs? I try to break it down into two kind of easy to remember categories. Of, uh, of things, of ways that the library can help you. Uh, and the number one category of the way that the library can help is that we answer questions. Um, and you know, in today's world, um, we can answer questions in lots of di different ways. Today's world right now, um, during COVID, um, some of your local library may be doing some of these things and not others. Um, so, um, so check with your local library about like which 
of these they offer. Um, and I, it, like I said, I'm going to be sharing examples here from Seattle Public Library so you can um, kind of interpret those for your local library system as well. But, you know, generally speaking, you know, we can answer questions via phone, um, in person, um, sometimes when libraries, uh, when, we, when we are able to have in-person events and things. Right now, um, I do uh, a lot of my uh, in-person work virtually. So uh, in WebEx uh, or online meetings or via phone, uh, helping entrepreneurs that way. Um, but in uh, times pre-COVID, um, the, the, most of that work was in person at the library, um, at, in, in a branch, um, that kind of work. Um, many libraries have chat where you can start the process that way. I would say for this kind of, of research, um, that's a good way to kind of get started, but we aren't gonna go very far with that. The expert um, that you maybe need to talk to isn't the person who's chatting with you, um, but they can kind of, it's not a bad way to, to get going uh, because they can connect you to folks who can then help you uh, at the next step of the process. Um, and then email uh, is a good way, another good way to get started there too. I've got the email address for the, my program, Library to Business or L2B uh, there on the screen. And um, that is uh, uh, open to any of you. You don't have to be a Seattle Public Library resident or a card holder to contact us. Um, you can, con any, anybody can contact us. We're, we're, we'll talk a little bit more about um, that libraries are local thing here in a minute about like, uh, it's, but, but that's really about access to tools, not about answering questions. So um, you're welcome to email myself and my colleagues or reach out to us in those ways or attend our programs or anything like that too. And then the, the last thing I have on this list here um, is uh, referrals. And, and I have referrals here because you know, one, of the, one of the things that I do quite often in my work is make introductions. I help people find that other organization um, that helps them in ways that that the library doesn't, you know, and so that uh, many of them are here at Biz Fair today. Uh, so you can connect with them out in the, the virtual tabling space that's happening here, like Business Impact Northwest or Ventures or like lots and lots of score who's uh, doing this, this um, putting on this amazing uh, program. So um, uh, referrals is a big part of what we do. The second thing that, uh, that the second way that the library helps and the thing we're going to talk about here most today is uh, that we buy tools for you to use. And this is probably what brought you to this workshop anyway, too, is that like, ooh, free market research. How do I get in touch? How do I use that? How do I get to that data? Um, and, um, and so of course, you know, libraries are known for books, you know, and, and so, and we're still in the book business. Those, those uh, uh, regardless of what people are telling you, books are not going away. The physical print book is still around and still will be with us for a long, long time. Uh, and, um, and, and those are great if you need to understand, you know, how to do something. Maybe I'm trying to like figure out, want to read a, a book on marketing by some marketing guru or something. I can check that thing out and I can bring it home and I can uh, read through it and get that information. Um, but when we're talking about data, which is what we're going to talk about here, um, most of the stuff that, um, that's published and the kinds of things that we need they're not published in those print volumes. Some of them still are, but a lot of them are electronic databases. And so the libraries have, you know, made that shift. And, you know, many of them are buying electronic resources uh, that are very valuable and useful for entrepreneurs. We're going to talk about a, a couple of those and examples in a few minutes. Um, then I've also got ebooks and media up there too, because, you know, ebooks is just another way of getting to that, that, um, that print volume, often we buy like the print version, the ebook version and some other, you know, audio book or whatever. Um, and then media, you know, uh, that in that sense, maybe it's some, maybe it's not necessarily a, uh, a, a, a book or something like that, but maybe it's like an online learning course or a video that um, teaches me how to do something. Uh, of course, there's lots of that kind of stuff out on YouTube and things, but, um, but the library has uh, sometimes it has those kinds of uh, resources which are like very professionally done and, and it, uh, set up in a way that you can really access the stuff that you want to learn easily. Um, and down here at the bottom, this is a really important part, like many of these electronic tools um, you can access from home with your library card. Um, and uh, so, uh, and that's just because we buy these tools and so the, the, the organization that we buy it from says like, okay, it's okay for you to put that up on your website 
but you know you need to make sure that your users authenticate with their library card because otherwise anyone in the world will be able to get to that and use it so it's all about licensing and so the library buys licenses to to use that data and use those uh, databases as opposed to a physical item that they that people can check out all right and and if you've got questions about any of this stuff too put it in the chat um, and i'll be monitoring chat so i can answer those questions as we go too Okay, so this is probably, a, this is a point I get, like, I get this question almost every time I talk. So I wanna like throw it out there and make sure that, um, that, uh, that, that you understand kind of how, um, how to get a library card. Because sometimes folks, if they're convinced by this, they're like, wow, I need to get a library card. Where do, how do I sign up? Where do I sign up? And uh, so the thing I wanna like make sure that, I, that, that, um, is, you know, that folks understand is that you know, libraries are local. Libraries are local in institutions. Uh, and in such, like we all are funded in different ways. Like the Seattle Public Library is, you know, a uh, part of the city's, um, the, the city of Seattle. And so we, you know, we're, we're part of that um, structure. Whereas, you know, around us, we have King County Library System to the north, Snohomish County has a, a Snow Isle Library System, Pierce County, like we have library systems all across our, our state. And um, each one of them works differently. And like I said at the very beginning, you know, libraries are libraries work as reflections of their communities. And so, um, what um, what what happens there is that you know the tools that they buy for you to use may be different than the tools that um, Seattle Public Library or uh, uh, King County Library purchases. Um, we're going to talk about some examples just because we're you know I the, of the tools that I have access to. But that doesn't mean that your library doesn't have access. In fact, if you need to kind of like check in with somebody and ask that question, you know, you can check with your local library. Um, but I'm always also happy you can connect with me. Uh, I have my email in these um, slides or you can chat with me here and I'm happy to take a look and, you know, and show you some of the tools that you might have access to and help you figure out how do I get access to some of these tools that I that I need for my business. Um, so libraries are based on where you live, work, or go to school most of the time. Uh, so if you're, and that's how like we determine like that you can apply for a free card. Um, in pre-COVID times and post-COVID times, um, there are these reciprocal agreements between library systems. So for instance, if I live in uh, in Pierce County, I can get um, you know a Pierce County library card, of course, but I can also get a Seattle Public Library card, and vice versa. So we have these agreements between library systems. Not every library system has those agreements, but you know there's a lot of them that kind of do that. And so just check those. It gets complex. So but check in with your local library systems to see what kind of relationships they have in that way, so you can take advantage of those um, those agreements. Uh, during COVID um, right now, like I think most of the libraries are set up in a way, uh, you know, at least right now we're set up so that you can really just get a library card for where you, where you live, work or go to school. So you have to, um, so there's a different process, um, but we're hopeful that in, uh, in some time in the near future that will open up and there'll be a different way um, to be able to uh, take advantage of those reciprocal agreements again, uh, because I know those were um, valuable for, for a lot of folks. Okay, so I'm gonna move on from this. Uh, so I got a lot more to cover, but um, just wanna make sure uh, that if you have questions about, you know, how do I get a card, contact your local library, contact me. I'm happy to kind of help, help, help you figure that, uh, that process out uh, and, and, and get you to the folks that can answer it. Whoops, oh my, okay. So um, let's, let's step back and talk about like what kinds of information are on to, you know, th that you need in your work. Uh, and having done this now for you know quite a number of years, there's some trends in uh, the questions that I hear over and over again. Um, and here's some of those trends. Uh, uh, one of the one of the um, the main questions I, I hear is like, I need to create a list of companies that do whatever. Like maybe they're other restaurants or, or uh, uh, restaurant suppliers or some things like this. Uh, it, uh, so basically, like a directory of companies. And I need to understand uh, that because maybe it's my a list of potential clients for my business. Maybe it's um, uh, I'm trying to understand my competition of other companies that do exactly what I do, um, or suppliers or something like that. Lots and lots of of, of uh, you know questions that there are ways to ask questions about uh, other companies. Um, 
very important stuff, but not as important as number two. <laughs> the second thing on my list here uh, is like, how do I find information about my customer? And I say that's the most important question because uh, like, as, as you'll hear in many of these other workshops um, here at BizFair, um, focusing on that customer, focusing on their needs and what they, where they are, all of that, that is like a, a, so, so important. It's paramount, um, you know, uh, like figuring out what their needs are and how you uh, fit in addressing those needs uh, is like, uh, it's everything. Um, so finding information about that customer um, can be important. And so, and we have tools that, um, that can help you out with that. So, um, one distinction that we should talk about here with this question is, uh, you know, there's different, there's of course the business to consumer, which is households and individuals. And then there's business to business where you're serving businesses with your, um, with your uh, services or, or, um, or um, products. Uh, and um, so for business to consumer, um, you know, that's demographics, that's lifestyles, it's statistics about how much money people spend on things. Um, it's about like their psychology and things. Whereas business to business is a little trickier. Uh, and then maybe it's like back to question one, right? It's like, I need to make a list of potential clients or may maybe I'd look at that list and start to understand um, trends that are in that industry. So, um, uh, but, but nonetheless, you know, business to consumer, we've got tools that can answer those kinds of questions. B uh, business to company, we have qu tools that can answer those kind of questions too. Um, moving down to the third one, um, market trends. Um, so this is another, I would consider this probably number two in the list. Maybe I should reorder them, I don't know. But uh, uh, market trends, this is a, there's a lot of different kinds of detail that go into um, market trends. So this might be a forecast for your industry. Like, is it growing? You know, like what, what's happening in, in the uh, food business industry? Is it, um, how, how much is it expected to grow? Um, how much do they spend on advertising in my industry as a percentage of uh, sales and those kind of things? So these are all questions that, um, that, that can be answered and there's, uh, uh, and there's tools to, to can do that, but it's not always very, it's not always straightforward. And the, the, the data set tends to get buried too, is another thing that, that uh, we'll share here too. Fourth thing on the list here, sometimes I just need to learn either what hoops do I need to jump through or um, how to do something. Maybe I'm launching a new market, uh, marketing campaign. I need to understand uh, some like, you know, uh, how to do some strategic marketing, um, how to build a website, like all kinds of different things you might need to understand how to do. Uh, and we have tools uh, that can do that too. In fact, uh, I'll share a little bit about lynda.com, which is a tool that many libraries subscribe to. They have a ton of different um, uh, classes, online classes that you can watch on demand and you can get to them for free with your library card um, in a lot of library systems. So um, that, that, just that alone is uh, a, a huge resource um, for entrepreneurs. Okay, so this is my dog. This is my cute puppy. This is Sox. Sox is in the presentation, um, mainly because she's cute, right? And uh, so we can all take a moment and go, ah, oh, look, look at what a cute puppy. She's a Boston Terrier pug, as I'm sure you probably uh, uh, want to know. Uh, this is her as a puppy and she's trying to get up over this little step here as we just brought her home. Um, Socks is a lot older than that now. This is probably seven years old. So now she's got some gray in her muzzle, as do I. Uh, and uh, and Socks is here because she's cute and also this. We spent $350 million dressing our pets up for Halloween. <laughs> so Halloween just having happened, you know, this is a, a relevant um, statistic here. So this is an example of a market market trend uh, and one that's, you know, uh, it's actually a pretty big, big business that, that we spend money on. I also want this in the presentation because it illustrates, this slide illustrates something I think that um, I run into all the time. And that's that, information is not always published in the way that I want it. You know, uh, people are always looking for what I'm, what, you know, and I'm always looking for uh, uh, on their behalf. We're looking always for these, um, what's the size of my market? How big is it? Like, how much could it grow? Because, because, you know, let's face it, like, you're often putting all this, this, this detail together to put it in front of, uh, you know, and put it into a business plan and put that plan in front of somebody who's going to give you money. 
And so to, you know, be, because of that, you know, you need to understand like some of these, like what's the size of this market? And what's the pie? What's my piece of the pie? Um, and so in 2014, I went out to the National Retail Federation, who's the one who tracks uh, pet costumes. And I found this you know, beautiful market size right here, $350 million. Great, I got my number. But then I kept coming back to that, um, that number over the last couple of years to update this slide. And they stopped presenting it in that fashion. But they, they, so you can see on the side here, in 2019, 29 million people plan to dress up their pets in Cal ha for Halloween. That's 17% of people who celebrate Halloween. So it's not the, that, that nice like $350 million anymore, still a useful figure because it's still pointing at like, yes, people spend money on this. It's viable. Like this is going to work. Um, but I need to maybe, um, maybe um, take to, you know, a couple of, I need to maybe find another couple of more numbers to put that together into something that resembles the $350 million figure or whatever, like how many people celebrate Halloween. So, so there might be have other things I need to find, how many people have pets, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the other reason that I um, have socks in the presentation. Um, and then just for fun, um, uh, here's uh, the top uh, types of costumes. So 7.2% uh, uh, percent of uh, pet costumes are superheroes. Um, pumpkin, 9.3%, like, I mean, yeah, of course, pumpkins, we gotta, we gotta dress them up. And also here's an opportunity for me to present uh, my other dog, Junebug, there she is as a puppy too. So, and there's socks, you can see her a little bit older. Um, the other thing this, uh, that I wanna um, uh, share about this part of it too, before we dive into some more tools, is that, you know, when you think about this, you know, who is really, who is the customer here? Is it socks? You know, is socks the customer? No, she's not. Look at the, let me look at her face. She's not happy about having this costume on her. This is her Darth Vader hoodie. But so she's not happy about this at all. Um, is it me? Am I the customer? Well, kind of, but you know, I honestly, if I hadn't been at um, Petco with my two kids, you know, I would probably, you know, name them that dad, we got to get the Darth Vader hoodie for, for socks. I probably wouldn't have done it, you know? So like, it's, is it that? So you kind of have to think about that whole customer. So we're looking for, you know, statistics about dog owners, people, um, you know, with kids who will give in to shell over the $15 for, for the costume or whatever. So, um, so think about that whole customer and that those are all like things that, um, that I do as we think about that market research, um, as we're thinking about that consumer for our product or service. Okay, before we, we're gonna, I promise we're gonna go through some, some, some cool tools, but before that, there's one other kind of, um, kind of concept that I wanna cover before that. And that's this, um, this idea of, um, or the, really these terms of industry and market, you know, and those, seem, those terms seem very similar to me, right? I mean, I'm sure it does for you too, um, but there's some subtle differences uh, in how those terms are used with business research um, that can be that can help us along the path. So I want you to think about you know walking into the farmers market. I walk into the farmers market and I see um, all kinds of things. I see the um, you know I see the um, people selling carrots, people selling tomatoes, like all these vendors that are selling various things. Um, I see people playing music. There's uh, th there's an atmosphere. There's consumers. There's all these different um, uh, elements to the market. All of that is the market. Uh, okay, so then industry in this example, which breaks down at some point too, but industry is just the two carrot vendors in competition with each other. Not, none of the other stuff, none of the buyers, all that kind of thing. Why is this important? Because industries are really well defined, whereas markets are very fluid. You know, they um, market industry is like something really specific, and markets are something that could be like in our example of pet costumes that those costumes are a subset of our, um, of our industry, of our pet and pet supply store industry. So here's how that, that all works. Uh, you may have heard these terms before, NICS codes or SIC codes. Um, those are what define industries. So down here, kind of faint at the bottom, you see this uh, 453910, that's the, that's the code for pet and pet supply stores. Within that, some segment of that, um, that industry is pet costumes, uh, but it's not defined like, um, like, the, um, like the NAICS code of pet and pet supply stores. Um, 
why that's important is that often we overlook data. Often we need to back up to, to the larger industry from our market. We need to back up to the larger industry because we can find a whole bunch more data. Um, because, you know, let's face it, our pet costume in uh, market is part of the pet industry. So we can find out about customers for pet and pet supply stores. Well, those are our customers too. So we can find, we can, we can supplement the, the specific data about, um, about the specific uh, market with industry data too, which can help us out a lot. So we try to find those like really specific numbers, but then we can supplement with the, um, the NAICS stuff there too. And then SIC codes, um, that's an older set of codes, but you do still see them around. And sometimes vendors have reused those codes in different ways, um, like one called Data Axle um, does. They take an, the older set of SIC codes and make them their own. So sometimes those SIC codes can actually be more specific. Um, and so some tools use one, some do use the other, some do use both. Which one to use? Well, I usually try one. If it doesn't get me close enough, I use the other one. Uh, so it's not, you know, it's not uh, something that, uh, you know, that, that's going to make or break finding information. It's really a shortcut is what this is, because if you understand how it's organized, it can help you get to the data you need. Okay. Uh, and then another uh, thing I want to mention here, too, is uh, when we talk about, you know, market research, um, most of the time we're referring to that as um, published things, secondary sources things that people have gone out and done the work and they've published it in some form. Maybe it's just on a website or a blog, but still it's still some, some things been you know, published already. But there's this whole other kind of market research that I just want to like uh, mention here, uh, which is going out and asking the questions yourselves. Um, so doing surveys, um, doing interviews with, with people who are your customers, um, doing focus groups, um, those kind of things. But, um, but if, if you do the, the secondary research first, um, those can help you understand what questions you might need to ask. They can help you kind of uh, help you understand, they can save you time and effort really because you might not need to ask some questions that you, um, that you, that, uh, you can find with secondary research. Um, but be careful with that too, because if you're doing the research yourself, you know, you want to make sure you're going to make decisions based on this. So you want to make sure that you have a statistical, uh, you know, a, a representative stamp sample for your, for what you're doing. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. And, you know, if you are doing that, that might be another area we could um, uh, find you some uh, tools on to how to do that kind of research as well, too. I know we have some books and things on how that research is conducted and things, too. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to dive off of my, I mean, well, actually, I think what I'll do is I'm going to, I'm going to go through some of the, some of the um, different tools that I'm going to share with you, but I'm going to also um, step out and of the slideshow and do a little bit of a demo so you can see how the tool works. So I feel like sometimes that um, is a, a useful um, piece here. So I want to make sure it fits within the time that we have allotted, and I think it will. So we'll be able to just do some short demos of some some of the tools. They do a lot more than what I'm going to show you, um, but this is so. This is kind of like a you know just a teaser in terms of what um, what each of these tools can do, and but it can be give you some helpful things uh, on how they work. Um, the first tool I want to talk about is something called this this tool called Data Axle. Um, and uh, it used to be called Reference USA until very, very recently. And then suddenly its name was now Data Axle. So that's growing on me. Um, and uh, this is a directory tool. So this is a tool that I can use to make lists of my customers or my clients. Um, uh, and why I like this tool is it's kind of faint here on the screen, but you might be able to read here. 59 million businesses are in this database. So it's huge. And it's US wide. And so I can go in and actually has Canadian businesses too, but I can go in and I can query um, for companies that do something in this, whatever geography I'm looking for. Okay, so let's do that. Um, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna show you how to get to these tools really quickly. Um, and, uh, and then we will uh, uh, come back to um, this here in a minute. And we'll go through the other tools too. Okay, so now we're at the Seattle Public Library's website. Um, and here under our website, we have under programs and services, 
business. And we have this page where we have a, you know, launch or grow your business. We have a business calendar of events here. If you want to take some classes, like I said earlier, you don't need to be a card holder to be to take classes. We'll have a lot of events coming up, um, especially in the new year, where um, lots more people are interested in entrepreneurship in the new year for some reason. Um, but for our purposes today, I'm going to go here to the business resources tab, click on tools to start my business. I could have clicked on the tools to grow my business. There's a lot of the same tools there too. Just depends on which one you're doing. Are you growing the business or are you starting it? Maybe you're doing both. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so a lot of these tools, like I said, we're going to look at these examples. But but you know, look at your if if you're not in Seattle, look at your local library and see if they have these exact same tools or do they have something similar. Um, and I'll start. I'll try to uh, talk about that as as we go through here too. Um, down here is my, well, I need to even change the name, but uh, it's uh, Reference USA is the same thing as Data Axle. So I click on it and need to put my card number and my PIN number in because I'm not in the library today. And click the login. And it lets me into Data Axle here. And um, there's, there's my US businesses. So I'm going to click on US businesses. I could type in a company by name, but that's not what I want to do here. What I really want to do is go to my advanced search because I want it to tell me the names. I don't know the name of the business. I want it to show me that. So go to advanced. Then I go to business type. And remember our SICs and NAICS codes there? Okay, so let's just do pet for pet, pet and pet supply stores. And we get carpet, pet boarding, carpet, pet care. Uh, see here I might I need, I get, there's a lot of pet companies here the other thing I could do is just I'm going to shortcut to this four five three nine one zero if I know the know the code I can do it that way and there it is pet shops okay so I could you could see I could do tropical fish um, all kinds of different ways to 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 cut the information if I click update count 13,000 pet stop shops nationwide that are listed here but then let's take this city and state here. I'm going to type in Seattle. Okay, so I can do Seattle and I can do more than one. Let's go ahead and do Bainbridge Island too. Click update count. Okay, now I got 39 and that's uh, 39 pet shops. Click view results. There they are. I can go into any one of them, you know, so there's Mud Bay, the different locations of Mud Bay, you can see there's a corporate structure there. Um, let's go ahead and um, click on that top one there, Mud Bay on First Avenue. Just want to show you what you get. You get some contact information up here at the top. You get their lines of business. So pet and pet supply stores, that's why they came up. These be a little bit careful with this demographics stuff here. This is business demographics because these are estimates. Um, but Reference USA is using algorithms and ways to estimate how much money uh, they think that this location brings in. Um, they've been in this business, this database for about 10 years. This location has. Uh, they have about five to nine employees. So it can give us a, a sense of that. Why are they estimates? Well, private companies don't have to share that kind of stuff. So because they don't have to share, they probably won't. And uh, because it's not in their interest to do that because we could compete in a with them in a different way. So that's why. Um, so um, they have these ways of kind of statistically kind of uh, coming up with an educated guess on these things. Still, you know, as it's as good as it gets with maybe the closest we can ever get for this particular store. A management directory. And then down here at the bottom, Estimated expenditures, so we can kind of estimate how also also uh, estimates, but he can estimate how much this location spends on different things to keep them up and running. Okay, um, and then I could take these, select the ones that I want, come back here to the beginning, click download, download them into an Excel spreadsheet. I can do all the data from that whole thing and play around with it there, and that's probably what I would want to do if I'm doing this as a uh, estimating my uh, competition here. Um, I'm not going to go into much more detail. There's other things this can do, but um, I want to get to some of the other um, tools here. So I'm going to um, drop back out of my 
sharing. Um, before I do that, actually, I'm going to uh, take us back to the beginning. So we'll um, spl.org. So when we come back for our second one, we're all set there. So I'm going to stop my share, get back into my PowerPoint. Okay. So we, we talked about data axle, AKA reference USA. And the next one I wanna show you is demographic, demographics. Um, so remember we were talking about customers. So this is why this is one of the most exciting databases that we have. Um, and you know a lot of this data comes from census. So, and the census isn't a bad resource in and of itself. I use census data all the time. Sometimes, um, Sometimes it, uh, demographics now doesn't do exactly what I want it to do. So I'll go to census for that. But this also has, so this has census data and also has things that you can't get in the census because it comes from private companies as well. Um, this is a little query just that I put together and this is a heat map um, that shows where people live that spend more money on breakfast and brunch. Um, so look, in this case, the central district here in Seattle um, they are the highest spenders in this, in this, in the ones that I looked at uh, for brunch. Um, and there's a lot of brunch restaurants in that area, so it makes sense that people would be spending more than even more than Mercer Island, uh, which uh, per capita makes more money if we were to look at that from that perspective. Um, so this is data that I can get from demographics now, and I can put this all together, um, and we can do it for lots and lots of different products and services. Um, another thing that um, we can do in this database is we can go in and we can create, we can access these market segmentation profiles. That's a, uh, a, a big name for lifestyles. <laughs> so what they do is they create, uh, they being in this case, uh, Experion um, is who creates these profiles. And they create these, um, these, these lifestyle um, personas is a way to think about them. Of, so in this case, we have the, the no place like homes and the unspoiled splendor, um, uh, urban edge. So this is the urban edge. Um, uh, so a couple of highlights from urban edge, this, that group. Um, so they're uh, urban dwellers as the name implies. Um, they're health enthusiasts, they're ambitious. So we can get like, there's, there's a, uh, like a, a huge document of like six pages of detail about these people and like what they like, what they don't like. Why this is, why this is different than census data is that um, it goes beyond just how old they are, how much money they make, all that kind of thing. We're getting into lifestyle preferences, how they live their lives, why they do certain things. And that could be super useful as we're trying to market our, um, market our, our uh, products or service services to them. And then they tell us how, how many uh, of those folks are in our geography. So in Seattle, Urban Edge is 26% of the population. Washington statewide, 2.92% of the population. So we can get some actual numbers and we can like go back there and, and we can see the channel preferences. So in this case, they're like way off the charts in email marketing. So I can find out where they are in terms of like how to, and how to reach them. And, and also like things about them that that are gonna uh, resonate uh, as I create uh, my marketing for them. Um, so uh, what I would do is just look in that local localized geography and I can you know, find out uh, you know, how, who's there. Um, and uh, so that can be a, a great way to um, approach it. Let, let me show you that one real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my sharing and go, we've done this once before. So we're gonna try it again here. And we're back at the library's website, same thing, programs and services, business. And in this case, business resources again, tools to start my business and demographics now. So it's not asking me for my library card because it's remembering me from, um, from a few minutes ago. And that's kind of a nice feature. Even though I'm switching between databases, it's remembering me. In this case, the way this one works is I go up here at the top first and I just type in the geography that I'm looking for. In this case, Seattle, I'll do that. And um, go ahead and click on Seattle. I set my location. And then I can go over here to the, um, to the demographics. And I could do more than one. In fact, that's a really great way to do it. Go to the options, go to my geography list. Let's select another one here too. So let's compare Seattle with um, 
counties in Washington. We're going to compare it to Spokane County. We've got them up there. We'll compare it to King County. That's yeah, probably good enough. We got a couple of geographies and you can see there are different types of geographies and that's fine. That's a good way to think about this is maybe like zip code, um, city, state, federal, you know, so we can kind of start to compare some of these geographies. Once I've set those up here in the top, then I go to my demographics tab and I can march through all of these reports. There's a ton of reports, even though it's not kind of, um, there's just a huge list of them there. Uh, one of the ones that's uh, almost always useful is this complete demographic report. So if I click on that one, click run the report, and you can see some total population numbers. Okay, so King County has 2.2 uh, 2 million people. Seattle has 728,000. Spokane is 527,000. Um, we can start to see by age, which could be useful too. You know, um, I don't want to discount demographics as things. So if we know that, you know, uh, we're looking for 25 to 35 year olds uh, for our, for that, that tend to buy this product or service. Well, here's our numbers. You know, if we're looking for older people, well, there's, there's how many of those are too. So we can quantify um, who, you know, the number of people who live there by age. We can also quantify by ace and, uh, race and ethnicity um, by, um, marital status, you know, um, educational attainment, uh, income, of course, that's an important one there too. So we can really start to see, um, you know, at, how much money people make and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and really trying to understand, you know, is there a market for this, for this service? Are we going to find enough people um, uh, and sort of uh, understand what's, you know, that, that, that there's enough folks that, that I think are there um, that will buy this product or service? And then down here at the bottom, five-year projections for all of those same categories. So I can start to understand, you know, how the population is going to grow, how many by age, like all that kind of stuff. Hopefully that's some useful, useful features here. Um, the next one I want to show you is um, these consumer expenditures. Remember I was showing you the brunch one there. Um, the one I that I want to show you because we are, are the because we're thinking about our pet costume business, right? Um, kind of going back to that, consumer expenditure total comparison has a whole bunch of different kinds of products and services. Here's hair care products. Um, down here is pet purchase supplies and medicine. So here's my total expenditures um, for the, each of those locations. Um, I could have done that by average household spending, um, but I like this because it's a big number. And <laughs> so, so it's uh, um, another way to do it. And here too, all these reports can be downloaded, download them in Excel so you can you know, play around with the numbers and all that kind of stuff. And then um, the last one that I'll do in here, you can see there's a lot of different reports, um, but uh, down here, the, the ones we were talking about, those mosaics, that's what those are called, the lifestyle ones. Mosaic comparison report. Here I'm doing, um, I'll just click on that one and you can see how things break down there. So uh, Spokane County has, you know, boomers and boomerangs. 25,000 people are boomers and boomerangs. Uh, and uh, Urban Edge, well, it's even, it's 28% of Seattle now. Um, King County, uh, only 10% of them are Urban Edge. Um, so. Each of these um, lifestyle segments, you know, you can really look at the numbers for each specific geography, and uh, and so you can understand how am I gonna how am I gonna set up my marketing to reach them, and then like what am I gonna say to them when I when I reach them so that they'll come to my store or um, we'll figure out uh, that they'll buy my stuff online or whatever it might be. Um, that's all I'm going to show. There's a whole bunch of other tools and you know, pieces of this tool that um, that I use. But um, in the interest of time, I'm going to stop my sharing and go back to my slideshow so we can move on to the um, the other ones that I have to tell you about. Um, so we've talked about um, we've talked about the uh, you know data axle. Just to kind of recap here, data axle information about other companies. It's a great resource for that. 
demographics now, information about our customers. You know, uh, where do they live? How much money do they make? What's their lifestyle? All that kind of stuff. And then the third one, remember we were talking about market trends. This is the one where we, we start to run to a lot of different directions when we talk about market trends. But one of the ones that I run to the most often is this set of reports called First Research uh, that are done quarterly, um, which is what I like because I want the information to be fresh, you know, for each industry. I want them to be talking about trends and include what's going on, trends based on COVID and trends on, you know, so I want, I want all that kind of stuff. So I, that's one of the reasons I go running to this is because it, will, it really will have the latest trends. Um, the example I've got up here was done right at the beginning of the pandemic, so it probably doesn't talk about it, but I actually have gone out to the same one. There's a more recent one, and, and it does. It talks about um, that in some of the issues and challenges and things. Um, this is just some of the highlights um, here uh, that I have on the screen. So uh, you can see it's got some nice you know, text-based kinds of things uh, that talk about the issues and the challenges but also some of the like nice numeric kinds of uh, kinds of things to tell the story um, mathematically of your success of your business. Um, so uh, in this case, they went out and analyzed 2016 mobile food businesses, and they found that those businesses spent 4.4% of their uh, net sales on advertising. So that's a useful number because if I'm starting a mobile food business, um, or I'm running a boat mobile food business, now I know what the industry norm is. And so I could either, you know, well, maybe I want to be strategic and say, uh, I'm going to have, I'm going to spend 5% or 8%. But, you know, I don't want to be pushed around by the market and be spending too much. You know, if, if all my other, um, if everybody, everybody else is spending a lot less, that's useful to know um, so that I can make that be a strategic decision rather than just getting pushed around. So that's what this kind of tool can do. And then you know it tells us a lot of um, a lot of the issues and challenges and uh, things that are going on in the industry, stuff that's keeping people up at night. Um, these happen to be in a tool called um, ABI Inform. Um, I think, in the interest of time, um, I think we'll uh, I'll just uh, skip over the how to do this one. It's also a little bit more complex, but um, this is uh, uh, well. No, let's let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop out and we'll do a very quick. Um, search and I, I'll do this for for a good for a reason. Um, I want to uh, I want to show you. This is a good reason to ask the librarian for help <laughs> because it's not as straightforward. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to spl.org/business. I didn't do that uh, earlier, but that's a little shortcut just to this page here. And then uh, go to business resources tools to start my business. And then here it is, ABI Inform. That in even of itself, like what does that name even mean? You know, like, it's not super inviting. So this is like, this is a good example of one that's a little bit more challenging or tricky. And I, I'll be honest with you, it took me years to figure out that these were even in here. I did just stumbled across them. So um, so don't don't feel bad if, you know, if you're not finding, if you go into this tool and type in pet pet supplies and you're not finding what you need, you're not alone. <laughs> uh, what the way I get to these reports is I go to this advanced search, um, pet supplies. Leave that anywhere, or actually, I'm going to put that in the title. So I only want those words in the title, and then here for publication title, first research. So I'd have to know that. Whoops. I'd have to know that the, 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 that first research is where I'm what I'm looking for in here to even start this search. Um, but then there it is, pet and pet supply stores. Yeah, it's published this month, a couple of days ago. So here's this nice market research report on the pet and pet supply store industry. And um, it's kind of hard to, I'm sure it's very small on your screen. So I'll go ahead and make mine a little bit bigger here. But here's the market size, 9,750 establishments, uh, which make a combined annual revenue of $17.2 billion. Pet, su pet supplies are big. Um, pet food is 46% of the market. Pet supplies, so our, our, um, our pet costumes are part of this 35% number here somewhere. Um, talks about franchises, talks about like 
what's going on in the industry. I'm just going to scroll down because my favorite stuff is a little bit further down here. And here, industry indicators. Here's the forecast. Yeah, we all know 2020. <laughs> so shrinking, but only shrinking at 1.8% is maybe the way to think about this. You know, so it was growing last year, shrinking at 1.8. And then, well, they're they're talking about um, some of that consumer spending coming back, you know, 8.7% in 2021, and then leveling off a little bit back to where somewhat where it was, you know, so that tells a, a little bit of a story there. Um, and then it tells us why industry drivers, issues, you know, sales depending on consumer spending, challenges, overweight pets. Oh, <laughs> I guess it, <laughs> uh, trends. Look at this one. Pew, or, or pet humanization means higher spending. As owners treat their pets more like children, demand for premium products and services increase. If that doesn't say pet costume, I don't know what does. So that's what, a good little feature that I'll like pull out of that and like, According to first research, you know, if I, I'll put that right in my business plan. <laughs> Lavish spending has fueled growth in specialties as gourmet pet food, deluxe, deluxe pet hotels, and pet photography. It's also a lot. It's a fun industry, too. <laughs> uh, so lots and lots of stuff. And then down here at the bottom are those um, industry uh, you know, norms. And look at this one's way different than the mobile food. 1.7% of their um, net sales goes to goes to advertising. So you can really see some of the like the like real differences in how industries operate and things and how much uh, there's lots and lots of detail here. And so if you're confused at how to use these numbers, well that's where to, that's where you should go talk to a score counselor or SBDC or uh, uh, Women's Business Center or uh, an organization like the uh, Ventures or something uh, where they'll help you out with that kind of um, like how to how do I use this data? Um, so let's go back to the slideshow. I, I, I'm glad we went through that because I think that that's, a, that's actually one of my more fun searches. And I also, um, like I said at the beginning, like it also like that wasn't the most straightforward search, right? It was kind of tricky and like we, we may have missed something. Like that's a database that I use to dig for data that I don't know if, I, if it's there too. Cause it's got thousands of market research and thousands of trade publications in it. So, um, so that's a good reason to ask your local librarian like for help, you know, and, and my team and I'm here to help you and support you um, through this process too. Uh, we talked about lynda.com. I'm not going to do a um, demo of this one because it, it really is pretty straightforward and how to use it. But there, there are lots and lots of tools in here. And lots, and lots, it's a tool, but there's lots and lots of uh, really well done videos that can tell us um, how to do stuff and show us, illustrate at a beginner level, intermediate or advanced level. So there's, there's really a lot of, of great learning um, to be had with uh, lynda.com. Um, business plans handbook. This is another one that, um, that I use a lot. It's like an encyclopedia of business plans. Um, so essentially I can go in if I, you know, I work with a lot of folks that, that let's face it, they, they're writing a business plan, but they've never read a business plan. So, and if, if maybe they've read a business plan, but not one for their specific industry, here's where you can go and get an example of a, of a business plan for an industry or one that's close to yours. So it can be really useful because then you can see what kind of language they're using, um, where do they actually put the numbers? Like why, do, you know, what goes into this thing and what sections? Um, and usually folks like will look at that and, and it can be empowering because it's, can, you can say like, it, you can take a breath and say, wow, I think I can do this. You know, it's like, th this wasn't rocket science after all. I can really, I can, I can, um, cause it's a, it, it feels daunting for me too, you know? Uh, so, uh, so this could be a great place to go and get an example business plan. Um, Another one that I use a lot, um, Best Customers. This is a, um, uh, a really cool tool that um, really straightforward. It's actually just a book. Um, we have it as a database, but there's a print version of it. And it really just gives us at a really high level um, how much people spend by demographic on different types of supply, or different types of products or services. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but there are local business, local business publications like uh, Puget Sound Business Journal or Daily Journal of Commerce. Those can be useful um, uh, places to look for, for data. Uh, and then business ratios. This is where things get confusing. 
um, we were taught, actually, we were looking at some business ratios when we were looking at those uh, percentages of uh, or where, where we're looking at like sales, a percentage of money spent on sales as a percent of, of, um, of uh, income. Well, um, here's more, you know, <laughs> lots and lots of other, uh, other uh, data points. And I, I, I'm using the example of 2014 here, but um, honestly, like I have the 20, um, 2019 over here on the shelf. Uh, so like we, we continue to get this, uh, this, this volume. Uh, and the other one there, RMA, is one that we, uh, we at Seattle get as a, a database. Um, these will make your eyes crossed and be very confusing if you look at them too long. Um, so um, that, get some help with these because it looks like this. This whole book of these tables with all these little uh, details and stuff. So uh, the economic census, you know, the census, the, the census has a lot of data. And I mentioned that at the beginning. And so e even if your local library didn't have some of the stuff uh, that we've been talking about, the census is free and it's out online and, and uh, we can get you access to that for sure. And there's a ton of stuff and a lot of those data points, um, not all of them, but a lot of the data points came from the census originally. So um, that's another way you can get to good data points. Um, and then, um, you know, we were talking at this about this at the beginning, but um, you know, sometimes folks um, need to understand how to do something. And so here's like a selection of books on uh, like legal guide to small business and small business sort of how to write a business plan, like all these kind of how to kinds of things. And of course the library has those kinds of things too. Um, this is, you know, uh, I, we talked about a lot of different um, data sources and hopefully I didn't overwhelm you with too many um, types of, of data sources. Um, but you know there are others, you know, and certainly um, I'll say you know uh, we've been talking about resources that you can get at your local library. Um, but you know, for I often will go out and, and do the Google search as well too, and 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 um, and you know when I go go out and I reach uh, a uh, a paywall or something, you know, try to figure out way other ways to get the data. Um, and so um, sometimes what we can do is we can understand like. Who produces the data? Maybe there's a trade association. This is another trick that I use a lot. Uh, trade associations might be the ones doing the surveys of their members, so they might have that report. Sometimes they they put that behind a paywall too because they're trying to make money. But other times they might offer that report to, for free. I'm sometimes surprised at what kind of things I can find uh, sometimes out there too. So lots and lots of different uh, different resources. Um, and I'm going to close with this slide, and and uh, because uh, the most important thing um, to remember from all of the stuff that I talked about, if you're confused or if you're lost or whatever, um, all you need to remember is that you can contact us, and we'll help you through that. Um, so don't feel like you're in this alone. Um, uh, we're here to support you in this work too, uh, and uh, so you can reach out to us. And um, we'll we'll help you um, with with your uh, with your questions and by uh, by asking us questions. That's how we learn too. So the more questions um, we get, makes us stronger to um, help the next person uh, that comes along too. That might have something similar or or the same question sometimes too. Um, and up there on the screen at the bottom, I have uh, the. Uh, information for some of the like Seattle Public Library, King County Library System, Snow Isle. But you know, if you're in um, Spokane or if you're in like Walla Walla, wherever you might be, like check out your local library's um, uh, offerings of tools because you might see data Axel and you might see like you, each one's different. So I can't speak categorically about all of them. Um, but um, there's, a, there's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of library systems that do have these kinds of things when I start to dig in. So just check it out. Contact me anytime with this l2b at spl.org. That's me and my colleagues. So like you got 10 librarians that are looking at that email, um, but all of us are trained in, in business uh, and you can, you can write to me directly there and I'll reply back. Uh, so if you have questions, um, this is the most important things. Uh, we're, we're here to help and uh, uh, thank you for being here. So. Uh, hopefully, um, this has been useful for you. Um, I uh, hopefully I've been able to answer some questions in the chat. 
Um, but if not, you know, just email me and I'm happy to help out whenever. All right. Well, thanks very much for being here and uh, appreciate the questions. Keep them coming. Mm -hmm.